back in uh, section 1-3, we did quadratic equations. And one particular example we did was we found the equation of a ball that was thrown vertically up into the air. Okay, straight up and fell straight back down. And you can get that equation by using, um, using this right here where h is the height, g was gravity, and we used feet per second squared. So we substituted in negative 32 or substituted in 32 in for g. And then v sub naught right there was the initial velocity, and h sub naught was the initial height. Well, with parametric equations, we can actually get the equation of a ball that is thrown at a certain angle. So the way you do that is um, the x distance is the velocity, okay, the initial velocity, times the cosine of theta t. So in other words, uh, if we have a ball that's thrown at 50 feet per second, that would be its initial velocity, times the cosine of whatever angle it's thrown at. Now, if we're using Excel, we'll have to use uh, radian measures. So if it's thrown at, let's say, 30 degrees, that would be pi over 6, or 60 degrees, pi over 3, and you can always convert that. And that's how you can get the horizontal distance. Now, to get the vertical distance, you have the gravity involved, like we do up here, negative gt squared over 2. So that's negative gt squared over 2. We also have now, instead of just v sub naught t, it's v sub naught times the y component of velocity. And the y component is the sine of theta. Remember the sine is the y value and the cosine is the x value. So this is breaking up the velocity into its x and y components. So the cosine goes with the x and the sine goes with the y part. So it's v naught times the sine of theta, whatever angle you throw it at, times t, how many seconds it's been in the air, plus h sub naught and h sub naught is its uh, original height. So let's go ahead and uh, do an example here. And it says, write the parametric equation and graph the path of projectile thrown at an initial velocity of 50. So that's your V sub naught, feet per second, 50 feet per second. That means that we'll have to use for gravity negative 32, or 32 uh, feet per second squared, since the units are in feet. Okay, if it was meters, we would be using 9.8. But this is in feet, so we'll be using 32 that we'll be substituting in for G at an angle of 60 degrees. Now we'll have to convert that over to radians, and 60 degrees is equal to pi over 3. And then it's at an initial height of 6 feet. So this is your h sub naught, which matters right here in your y equation. So your x equation is uh, v sub naught times cosine of theta t. Angle of 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. So substituting that in, we get x of t equals 50. That's your initial velocity times the cosine of pi over 3 times t. And then the y part is negative 32 over 2, that's from your um, gravity, plus 50 times the sine of pi over 3, just substituting the values right in here to this part, sine of pi over 3 plus 6. Now this simplifies to negative 16t squared plus 50 sine of pi over 3t plus 6. And now at this point, we can go to the any graph sheet out to where there's parametric equations and type in the, uh, the two equations. Now, I already have those typed in, so let's take a look at how I typed them in. This is the toughest one to type in as your y of t. It was negative 16. I typed in equals negative 16 times t carried up squared plus 50 times sine of pi, open parentheses, close parentheses, divided by 3, close parentheses, times t plus 6. And then the other one, I just typed in equals 50 times cosine, open parentheses, pi, open parentheses, close parentheses, uh, divided by 3, close parentheses. Or you could work out these sines and cosine separately and then just type in the numerical values. So once you type those in and click the uh, get click here to get graph button, you'll get the graph of these uh two parametric equations, and if you set your start and end to be from 0 to 2.85, you'll see that this uh, graph hits the ground in 2.85 seconds. Now going along here is actually not t, but it's x. Okay, so this is the actual path of that projectile thrown, or whatever, project shot or whatever at 60 degrees and this this is the path of projectile so this doesn't go out to two right here it goes out to 70 because 70 feet out is where that projectile will hit the ground approximately now we can find out different things from this uh 
uh, this, these parametric equations. Like, for example, you might want to know when does this uh, object hit the ground. Well, if you want to find out when, you, when it hits the ground, you set your y of t equal to 0 and solve it. Well, that y of t equation was a quadratic equation where the a was negative 16. Your b, your b was the uh, tough bit right there. That was 50 equals 50 times the sine of pi over 3. That's the b. And then the c is 6. And when you uh, check this out here, it tells you that there's two x-intercepts. And the one that makes sense is 2.838. So in other words, this thing is going to hit the ground in 2.838 seconds. Also tells you what its maximum height is. Its maximum height is 35.296 feet high, and that occurred in 1.353 seconds. See, x now is playing the role of t. Now, what we can do is now that we know that it hits the ground in 2.838 seconds, we can find out how far out horizontally it hits the ground by substituting in the 2.838 into your x of t function. So it was x of t, and I'm substituting in 2.838 and that equals 20, 50, actually. Um, let me correct that here. 50 times the cosine of pi over 3 times 2.838. The cosine of pi over 3 is actually a half, and 0.5 times 50 is 25, so it's just basically 25 times 2.838, which gives you 70.96 feet, and that's when the object hits the ground. And you could adjust the start and end of your graph and, and of the any graph area and see that that's when it hits the ground. Let's do that one second. So I have the end out here on the any graph sheet to be 2.838. Actually, it's it uh, rounded it, but you can actually see that it hits right here. And then you could even narrow in on it if you wanted to and see it better. We also know from the quadratic sheet in the green section that it reached its maximum height of uh, 35.297 feet in 1.353 seconds. So if you want to find out how far horizontally it went, when it reached its uh, maximum height, you would just substitute in the 1.353 into the x of t function. So it would be x of uh, t, 1.353, equals 50 times the cosine of pi over 3 times uh, uh, 1.353. And again, uh, the cosine of pi over 3 is a half. 1 half times 50 is 25, and 25 times this 1.353 is 33.83 feet. And that's when the object hits its maximum height here at that uh, height right there. So that's uh, what you can do with these uh, parametric equations. It's pretty nice that uh, you can actually model projectile motion. You can also answer questions that come up in the homework about what angle might be the best angle uh, for this thing to be uh, uh, shot at, you know, would it be 45 degrees? Well, not necessarily when you go up, let's say, six feet high. If you're on ground level, 45 degrees is the best, ignoring air resistance. But if you go up higher, actually a lower angle is better to get further distance. And uh, also velocity matters in that too. So um, those are good things that, uh, that come up in this section.